What's up guys, Bob Buskirk here at Think Computers and I'm gonna be showing you Synology's Disk Station Manager. And this is their operating system that runs on all of their network attached storage devices. Now this is DSM 6.0. Um, they've been working on it for an extremely long time and they're one of the best, I would say, when it comes to making a NAS device easy to use. Now, a lot of us want to, you know, be able to back up things and store things in a safe place, but you know, before, back in the day, using a NAS was extremely complicated. You need to be extremely technical to use one. Now they make it extremely easy. Um, I'm a very technical person, but I really like this, this layout that they have and how they made it really easy. So let's just jump right in. And the first thing that I wanted to show you is when you set up your NAS, they actually give you a URL that you can access your NAS from anywhere in the world, any place, they do it all for you. Um, so that's what I want to show you first. So all I have to do is go to quick connect and you can see it's already in there. Um, quick connect dot two, and then you set up whatever your, your, the URL that you want it to be. So mine is Enigma five. I hit that and it will instantly find the NAS, uh, my NAS. And you can see that I'm connected. That's my, on my local network, but say I was outside of my local network right now, it would still connect me to the NAS. So I can still go in and see what's in there and manage it from anywhere in the world. You can do it on your smartphone. You can do it, um, pretty much anywhere. So I really like that because a lot of times, you know, you still might be able to do this. Um, if you remember your IP address, but if you're on a, some type of host where your IP address changes or you don't obviously remember your IP address, the URL is so much easier, quick connect dot two, and then whatever the URL that you set, set up. So it's very, very easy. I really like that. So let's go ahead and log in here. And hopefully I remember my password now that I think about it. And it looks like hopefully I will be logged in here. Oh, no, I knew that that wasn't the right one. That should be it. There we go. So I am in here and um, I have the help come up. I got to disable that, um, but the help will come up. And that's actually really nice too, because a lot of the times when you're using a NAS or getting to use, you know, any type of device, really, if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know where certain things are, um, these help. So there's like, you know, you can get started with DSM and then there's, you can learn about um, different, you know, different things that your NAS can do. So you can have the help up. Of course, you can close it if you want. Over here, we have our system health, which is really nice to see. So you can see, um, you know, our disk station is working well gives you our LAN IP address and our uptime. It's only been up for two days, just for the fact that I was uh, continually restarting it to change the different RAID modes to do our testing. So we did all that and we're back on the normal, uh, you know, what it should be here. You can see our resource monitor, um, not much CPU usage, um, some memory usage right there. And you can see the little graph showing you our traffic and all of that. Of course you can close this and everything. And one thing that's really nice about DSM is it's sort of like I'm on a desktop. I'm, you know, this is the operating system in a desktop. So everything is very easy to use. So we'll start on the far right over here. And these are widgets. So you can see, our, you know, you can open those or close those if you want them open or closed. We'll, we'll close them right now. We have a search here. So you can pretty much look up any setting in uh, search. So if you're not sure where something is, you can probably just search it and you'll find it. You can see our options here. So um, personal options and then restart, shut down, about and log out for all of that. And then we have our notifications. So you can see, you know, two days ago I was installing video uh, station, all that different stuff. Um, so anytime something goes on, it will be listed here in your notifications. So if something happens, there's an unexpected power down or something, you'll be able to see it right here in your notifications. Now we have these here, um, these are your shortcuts, but all everything that's installed on your NAS and all your settings will be right up here. So in our main menu, and this brings up everything that you can change and everything that you can mess around with on your NAS. Um, it's really cool. And I believe you just right, yeah, right click and you can add it to the desktop. So it's really easy to use. Um, so if you have a setting or something that you want to change all the time, you can go ahead and do that, but we'll go to the control panel and that's where you're going to find most of your settings. So all you have to do is double click and it will go ahead and open up. Um, and you can make it big or you can make it small, however you want to do it. So for file sharing, you um, you can set up a shared folder. So you can see right here, this is what we have um, set up, music, photo, and video. That's typical. Um, we have different uh, applications running, you know, to stream video and, and 
access photos and music and all of that, but you can easily create a shared folder um, and you can, you know, select the, lo select the location. We only have one volume, but if you have multiple volumes, you can go ahead and do that. And you can actually encrypt the folder if you want and set an encryption key and all that kind of stuff. And um, when you go ahead and set this, you can set what users have access to it. So you could have shared folders for different people and all of that, um, really easy to set up. Under file services, these are the different services um, that you can enable. So you can see we have Windows file service, you have Mac file service, and you have NF NFS. Um, and if we move over, you can set up FTP, TFTP, and RSync, so you can set that stuff up if you want. Under user, you can just see our users here. So by default, you'll have admin and you'll have guests, and of course you can create new users and give them access to what you want. You can um, set up different groups as well. By default, you'll have administrators, HTTP, which means act outside users and regular default users. Um, you can set up domains if you want. Um, that's all to do with your network, so you can go ahead and do that. Under connectivity, this is the quick connect, um, which I talked about when we first got in here. You go ahead and set this up and it links it with your Synology account. So you can easily, again, access this it just makes it super easy um, and of course you can change this and you know if you have a different NAS or you know your NAS changes hands or something like that you can set this up how you like external access here you can set up your DDNS um, your router configuration you can go ahead and set up and if you just click on set up router I'm not going to do it but it automatically detects your router and sets things up for you it makes it super super easy um, I was actually extremely um, surprised at how easy this actually is and then under advanced, you can set up um, different things uh, for your uh, disk station to work with different internet services. So it's pretty cool. You can set that up. Under your network here, um, it has all of your information, you know, your different gateways and everything like that. If you have proxy server, you can set that up. Network interface, you can see that we had just have LAN connected, um, but you can set up IPv6 and, and different things. Traffic control, you can create different uh, settings. You know, if I go in here, um, you can, can create a different traffic control rule and things like that if you want to control certain traffic. Static routes, you can set that up and you can set up different uh, DSM ports and all of that. So by default, you can see it's 5,000. You can see right up there, 5,000. So you can change all that if you need to. DHCP server, um, you can enable that if you want. Um, and you can you know set all this other stuff up as well under wireless now you can use wireless with this which is actually really cool so there is a usb i believe 3.0 port on the back and all you have to do is plug in a wireless adapter and you can set it to work which is actually very cool um so you can set that up if you want and then our security um you know different things like you can set your logout timer so if i'm inactive for 15 minutes I can go ahead and change all of that. Uh, you know, I'll be logged out uh, within 15 minutes. And you can obviously change that if you want. And just different security settings, firewall settings, you know, protection settings, auto blocks, uh, certificates, and uh, more advanced security settings. And then under system, this gives you all of the information about your NAS. So you can see our model name, you know, what we're running. How many, how many cores, uh, thermal status, all the different stuff. Um, time address, time zone, um, you know, if there's any external devices connected, you can see that. Under network, same thing, all of your network information. Storage, you can see your storage information here. So you can see our two disks, uh, six terabytes each, and you can see how much is actually being used, which is only 1%, um, and you can see, you know, all of the stuff for that. Under services, you can see all the services that you're running. You can enable or disable these services as well. So you can just, you know, hit the uh, check boxes and do all that. Under usage, um, this just, you can enable information sharing um, and share the location of your, your disk station with Synology. So you can go ahead and do that. And then just your Synology accounts, you can, you know, set up your account, change the account and things like that. Under theme, of course, you can change the, the theme here um, and your login style, and you can change the colors and background and make a custom background if you want. And then the theme itself, I believe there's just one theme. I don't think, oh wait, no, there's a couple more. So you have light and dark. So dark would be just a little bit darker. Um, 
but that's it not a whole lot of themes and i don't think that's a huge deal to not have uh, a lot of themes regional options you can you know you set your time zone and all that kind of stuff the language and ntp service indexing service so you can um have your media be indexed uh, which is nice and you can use those for the different applications which i'll get into so audio station photo station video station media server um, thumbnail settings and you can you know so it creates thumbnails all that kind of stuff and then your file indexing you can set all that stuff up as well notifications um, you can have notifications be sent to email you can have notifications be sent to sms push service um, so you can you know if something's going on with your nas and it's really bad um, it can send you an sms which is nice Task scheduler, um, you can create tasks and have them run. Um, so like the smart test and the DSM auto updates are set to do it uh, at certain times. Just, you know, it auto checks for updates and things like that. And you can set that all up if you want. Hardware and power, um, different things like you can enable memory compression, power recovery, um, different beep controls. So you can, if you don't want this thing to beep at all, you can turn it off. Um, fan speed, same thing. So if you want to, super cool all the time oh, you can always see enable full speed mode cool mode um led brightness so one thing that's really cool about the led brightness control is that you can set a schedule and i have it just you know on all the time but say i like go to bed at a certain time you know i can go ahead and turn it off at those times so the leds will turn off so say you have this in your room or a dorm room or something where you actually you know LEDs bother you, you can go ahead and change that. Uh, your power schedule, you can set that up. Um, HDD hibernation, it's set to hibernate after 20 minutes. You can obviously change that. You can set times, you can do all of that. External devices, um, if you had anything plugged in, this will be where you would set it up. And you can plug in printers and USB devices and as well as the Wi-Fi device as well. Um, and like USB storage and all that kind of stuff. Update and restore. Um, it will check for the latest, you know, DSM updates. We have it auto checking, so you really won't have to do this. But if you want to do that, you can also set backup. Um, you can restore default configuration and backup your configuration as well. And then under applications, you can see different privileges of each application. So whatever you have running has certain privileges. Application portal. Um, this will just set things up for those applications as well. Shared shared folder sync, so you can um, set this up. You know, you have to set up the sync, but once you do, you can change all the settings for it here. And then terminal and SN, SNMP, um, you can enable Telnet and SSH on here, and you can go ahead and set all that up as well. So that's a lot of settings. I know I went through it pretty quickly. Those are mostly the main settings with this and it's really easy you can see it's all in this window um, it's not like super hard to configure this at all um, you know you pretty much just set it and go and then change things as you go along but it pretty much ran on my network I didn't really have to change anything when I went in so we'll go ahead and we'll close our control panel out and one thing that I did want to go into is our storage manager so again this gives you all of the information on your storage what you actually have in this NAS and I'll full screen this one um, but you can see that again we have a healthy system and it's at one percent and you can see uh, everything like that now the big thing that I want to go into is our volume here so by default when you set this up it will have your hard drives go into the Synology hybrid rate uh, SHR and that gives you data protection um, so I, instead of having a total of 12 terabytes, I have a total of uh, six. But um, you can change this easily. You can hit remove, uh, remove the volume, and then you can go ahead and set up either RAID 1, RAID 0, or uh, JBOD. You can set that up with this. So if you don't like this hybrid RAID, or you want RAID 1, or you want RAID 0, you can go ahead and set this up. And it's extremely easy. I did it, uh, it just takes two seconds, hit remove, and then you add the RAID back in there. You can set up different disk groups if you want. Um, you get information on your your hard drives here and you can see we're using uh, Western Digital Drives and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can set up iSCSI 
stuff and iSCSI targets if you want, but um, it's really easy to do. And I really like the storage manager because it makes it easy if you want to change the raid mode or if you're adding in another drive or something like that, you can easily do that. Now, one really awesome thing about the Synology NAS is, is their package center. So basically think of this as sort of like an app store for the Synology uh, NASes. So you can go in and I'll make this big again. And you can see that there's a ton of stuff that we can actually run on our NAS. Um, you know, like antivirus, you, there's, uh, we have cloud station server enabled. So what we can do is we can have something, uh, have stuff saved on here and access it via the cloud and all that stuff. You know, we can install different stuff, a, a radius server, you know, photo station we have to, to manage all of our photos. We can set up an iTunes server. It's really cool that you have the ability to install all of this stuff and have it running. Um, you know, and again, this makes it super easy. All I have to do is let's just say, let, let's install something. Let's install our iTunes server. So we hit install and it's downloading and installing and it will open it and run it. Uh, it's that easy. So if there's something you want to do that requires a NAS, whether, like I said, you can set up mail, you know, you can set up your media server, um, surveillance station. So if you have a Wi-Fi camera or something, you want to record that data to your NAS, you can, you have the ability to do that. So you can see that iTunes was successfully installed. And of course you can see it's right there, um, you know, and, and all of that. It's, it's really, really cool. I really like this. Um, I didn't want to go in super, super, super detailed on everything, um, especially all the packages, because there's a lot of packages. And as you can see here, you can see that iTunes was installed on our notification, so it lets us know that. Um, the only other thing is our file station. This is just all the files that you have on your NAS, and you can easily go in there. Um, we have nothing really on here, because I just reset it, so. Um, but again, the DSM, uh, software or operating system works really really great um it's it's super easy it's that's one thing i really like about it but it does give you all those options to really get super technical and, and dive down into it and uh you know make the nas do everything that you want it to do the package center is great because you can install different packages that you can run on the nas as well it's super user friendly it's really awesome so if you have any questions about synology's disk station manager remember this is dsm 6.0 go ahead and leave it in the comment section below until next time catch you guys later